Hi everyone, it's Michael. So this is part two of my lesson on poles and polars. Um, and it, it starts off with a very simple characterization of what it means for a point to be on the polar of another point. Um, but this time it's in terms of cross ratios. Okay. So suppose that um, P is a point inside of a circle and Q is a point outside of the circle omega and we draw the line PQ and we let it intersect the circle at A and B, then it says that P lies on the polar of Q if and only if the cross ratio ABPQ is equal to one. So if you'd like to try to prove this, feel free to pause the video. So this is quite an amazing theorem. It says there's a very simple connection between polar lines and cross ratios. Um, so that is what I'm going to set out to prove. All right. So like I mentioned in my last video in part one, uh, the polar of point Q, uh, if we see the two points where it intersects the circle uh, and we connect them to point Q, those are actually the tangents of the circle. So I'm going to do that right here. So let the polar line intersect the circle in point C and D. Then, then for my previous video, it says in fact that QC and QD are tangents to the circle. Okay, so I'm gonna erase most of this line and just draw the segment CD because that's all we need to solve the problem. Okay, uh, so CD is the polar of Q uh, and we're given that P lies on it. Um, so in this video, I'm going to show the forward direction of the statement, but I'm going to leave it to you to show the reverse. Um, so we're given that P lies on the polar of Q, and we want to show that the cross ratio ABPQ is equal to 1. Okay. All right, so I'm going to use an interesting trick here. Um, so first, I'm going to start with the cross ratio ABPQ, and I am going to uh, project those four points through C onto the circle. Okay, so what happens when we do that? So A, B, P, and Q, I'm projecting them through C onto the circle omega. So A and B stay where they were. Um, P goes to point D. And Q, what happens when we draw the line C, Q, and see where it hits the circle? Well, CQ is tangent to the circle, so um, the line uh, CQ just meets the circle at one point, and so projecting Q through C onto the circle just keeps us at point C, okay? All right, so if you're not too familiar with cross ratios, you can see my video 54 uh, where I go into how some of this works, uh, but that's the first step. Okay, now one way to show a cross ratio ABPQ is equal to one is to show that ABPQ is equal to ABQP. So I'm gonna explain this algebraically later, but I'm gonna, first I'm gonna calculate ABQP um, in a different way by projecting through point D, okay? So if we start with the cross ratio ABQP, and we project through point D, which um, QD is also tangent to the circle. A and B stay where they are. Um, point Q, if we project it through point D onto the circle, well, since QD is tangent to it, that stays at point D. Okay, so Q goes to point D. And then if we project D through P onto the circle, we get point C. So P goes to point C. Okay, so the cross ratio ABPQ is equal to the cross ratio ABDC, and the cross ratio ABQP is equal to that same cross ratio. So they have to be equal to each other then. So ABPQ is equal to the cross ratio ABQP. And now I'm going to show that this actually means that ABPQ has to equal 1. So I think I've mentioned this in one of my previous videos, um, but I'm gonna prove it again algebraically. It's not a difficult proof. Um, it goes straight from the definition of cross ratio. 
Uh, so I'm going to look at the right-hand side, ABQP, um, and I'm going to unravel the definition of that. So we look at what is the ratio that Q divides the segment AB into. So that's QA over QB. And then we multiply it by the reciprocal of the similar ratio for point P. So we multiply that by PB over PA. Okay. But this, this entire expression is, is the inverse of the, of the cross ratio ABPQ. Because uh, this ratio, because if we took the inverse of it, PA over PB, that's the ratio P divides AB into. And then QB over QA, uh, that's the flip of the ratio that Q divides AB into. So this, so algebraically, this expression is 1 over ABPQ. Okay. And so uh, from here, it's very easy to see if we substitute this in to the right side of the expression, uh, the cross ratio ABPQ has to be 1 divided by itself. And so obviously it has to equal 1. Uh, some people also refer to cross ratios as being negative, uh, but in all my videos, I just take all cross ratios to be positive. Um, so if ABPQ is equal to its reciprocal, it has to equal 1. Um, so that uh, proves this uh, theorem. Okay, so it's, it's very surprising that there should be such a simple connection uh, between a point lying on a polar and a cross ratio being equal to one. All right, so now I'm going to go into the, the second theorem in this video, which is my favorite theorem on poles and polars. Um, so we have a, a cyclic quadrilateral ABCD, and I'm gonna draw basically every intersection possible. So, all right, so A, B, and C, D meet at point P, and A, D, and B, C meet at point Q, and then the diagonals B, D, and A, C meet at a point R, and we want to show that the line P, R is the polar of Q. So this is another theorem that seems almost too good to be true. Uh, you have a very basic configuration in, that occurs in many problems. Uh, a cyclic quadrilateral and you draw all the all the diagonals um, and you want to show that P, PR is the polar of point Q and it's kind of interesting because um, nothing in this problem immediately uh, resembles the definition of uh, poles and polars um, but using the theorem that I just went over in this video it has a very simple proof um, so I'm going to show you it here um, but if you'd like to try to figure it out yourself first, uh, feel free to pause the video. All right, so here is how the proof goes. Um, so we want to show that the line PR is the polar of Q. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the line PR, and I'm going to let it meet uh, BC and AD at points E and F. Okay? Okay. Um, so what I'm actually going to try to do is I'm going to try to show that the line EF is the polar of Q, uh, which would be the same thing. Um, now, if you've seen my video on harmonic conjugates, I'm not sure. I think it might be video 55, but in that video, I proved that the cross ratio ADFQ in this configuration is equal to 1. Um, whenever you have this kind of a configuration, you have a triangle APD, uh, you have three concurrent uh, Chevians, and then you draw the line through BC, and it meets the extension of AD at point Q, um, then you always have ADFQ is equal to 1 in such a configuration. Um, so ABCD wouldn't even have to be cyclic for that to be true. Um, Okay, so ADFQ is equal to 1, so by the theorem I just mentioned, F has to lie on the polar of Q. Okay, and now I'm going to show that E lies on the polar of Q in the, in the same way. So we could just take this cross ratio, ADFQ, which is equal to 1, and we can project it through point P onto line BQ. 
Okay. So if we project through point P onto the line BQ, then the cross ratio ADFQ is equal to the cross ratio BCEQ, which also has to equal one, okay? Because the original was equal to one. And so from the theorem that I just went over before this, E also has to lie on the polar of Q, um, okay? So if F lies on the polar of Q and E lies on the polar of Q, uh, then the line EF is the polar of Q. And if the line EF is the polar of Q, then that means the line PR is the polar of Q. Uh, so this is a, a, an incredibly useful and powerful theorem. Uh, there's a lot of Olympiad problems where there would be a very long proof if you didn't use this theorem. And not only that, uh, we can deduce other facts. So if line PR is the polar of Q, then if we did the proof the exact same way, we could show also that line QR is the polar of P and that line PQ is the polar of R. So there's a lot of valuable information that comes from this figure. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks everyone.